New surprising details and new capabilities have been revealed about the Superjet SJ-100 test program. This suggests that Russia's SJ-100 has a wholly Russian-made fly-by-wire system. As you may know, Airbus's fly-by-wire system is the computer brain of all their aircraft. What the SJ-100 test flight suggests is that Russia's own fly-by-wire system not only matches its airbus but beats it in a number of important respects. As for the Superjet testing program, safety is the first consideration. The tests are rigorous, pushing the plane to its extreme to see if it will break. The aircraft has been tested under normal and extreme operating conditions to see if failure of the aircraft equipment will occur. For example, the simulation of an engine failure on takeoff to see if the plane can take off on minimum thrust using one good engine and to show that it is stable and will continue to climb out or seeing how the plane will react in the event of a tail strike. The aircraft is being tested by using a high angle of attack which is when the plane is on a steep climb. Russia's own fly-by-wire system a technology that was originally pioneered by Airbus, by Airbus would stop the pilot from exceeding the angle of attack, in a sense, the angle of climb. In a case where the speed is, exist, is exceeded, the fly-by-wire system would automatically deploy the speed brakes to slow the plane down or even force it to climb in order to reduce the speed. This is another step of automation that goes further than Airbus's normal fly-by-wire system. Also, the control system would automatically increase thrust in the event of low speed. So the control system has to, in effect, be pushed to its limit to make sure that it would not be prone to failure. Specifically, in a stall situation, by releasing the side stick to the neutral position, the plane would automatically take over to recover from the stall situation. Again, this is another extension or innovation by the Russia's, by Russia's fly-by-wire system. Secretly, Airbus must be looking at the innovations being made to the fly-by-wire system in the SJ-100 and considering whether these could be incorporated in its systems, whether now or in the future. The automatic deployment of speed brakes or automatic climb reminds me of the Boeing MCAS system in the 77 MAX which was designed to put the plane into a dive in the event of a low speed situation. What we can be sure about is that whatever changes Airbus makes to improve the safety of the fly-by-wire system, they would not be incorporating any system that its pilots are not aware of. Airbus has shown itself to be a company that does not engage in risky business. If you have not already done so, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. I have an ambitious target of 1,000 subscri subscribers by the end of uh, July. Now back to the video. The aircraft is also being tested in contaminated runway conditions, for example in wet conditions. The engine is also turned off and restarted during the flight. The information from the test is being used to program the simulators and also to train the pilots. Tests are also being carried out in normal temperature conditions as well as in cold weather, for example in Yakutsk and so far at minus 53 degrees centigrade, but also at high altitude or high temperature conditions in a number of Arab countries where the engine thrust is significantly lower due to the adverse effect on aircraft engine in such conditions. In addition to the innovation in the fly-by-wire system, there, there's also been a change in terms of the winglets on the SJ-100. The Russians have created their own name for it, but until this catches on, I will stick to the word winglets as everybody will know what I'm talking about. As a general rule, Winglets are normally vertical or at some large angle. United Aircraft Corporation claimed that their saber-shaped winglet will create 3-4% in fuel savings. An additional benefit is that they would allow for the plane to, plane's approach speed to be reduced by about 4 knots. The benefit is 
This would allow lower landing speed on shorter runways. Hopefully we can see this in full action eventually and it's something to look forward to hopefully in 2026. But there's a challenge that this plane will face when Western sanctions are eventually removed as no war lasts forever. The aim of these test flights is to prove to the Russian regulator, the Federal Agency for Air Transport, that the plane is safe. Proving this is not only about Russian standards but international standards such as ICAO, the specialized agency of the United Nations. This is a highly respected organization. As a result, transparency is required to prove to regulators in non-sanctioned countries that the plane is safe, including the fly-by-wire system and the new innovations. The prior Russian approach, for example with the MC-21 prior to 2022, was to include EASA, the European regulator, at the same time to show that the plane would be safe to fly in European airspace. With sanctions, this has not been possible, not only with the MC-21, but in this case the SD-100.